Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Shadowrun Hong Kong. This is episode 4, and we're going to go into the Mahjong Parlor and see what's up. And, ta-da, we've teleported in. The Swift Winds Mahjong Parlor, filled with the stink of cigarette smoke, the incessant click-clack of Mahjong tiles, and the grim faces of hardened gamblers. All right. And there we have it. All right, let's see here. Well, we can go back to the waterfront. Doesn't look like we know anyone to speak to just yet, but they seem to be here. Come in. We have a lot to talk about. All right. Well, I guess we go talk to Kindly Cheng, because here's our two folks, our two compatriots. We're gonna zoom all in close lock and talk to a friendly Cheng or Chen Chengli friend or I don't know, Kindly, Kindly Cheng. There we go. You can feel every eye in the room as you cross the Mahjong parlor to the middle-aged woman sitting patiently at its end. She's standing. The click-clack of ivory-colored tiles stops. Hands stray beneath tables into jacket pockets behind backs. The woman has the face of a prison guard and the demeanor of an inmate. Her salt-and-pepper hair is pulled into an iron-hard bun, and beneath it, two shiny black eyes offer nothing. Buttons sewn on a doll. A nearly empty bottle of something foul rests on her mahjong table, nestled between a pair of dirty shot glasses. Tiny puddles of brown linger at their bottoms. Gobbit and Isobel stand on the other side of the table, heads lowered, shoulders slumped, hands clasped. They risk a frightened glance at you as you approach. Kindly Chang's voice is nasal and rusty mean. My little pair of F-ups here told me about what happened on the docks. Too nasally? Too rusty? I think so. She dips a pinky into a shot glass, brings it to her mouth, removes it with a sharp smack. That wasn't very sharp, but meh. How about two of my best... How two of my best runners had their heads put out. How you need protection and how you need to get your identities wiped before you get your heads put out, too. Potentially leading the heat to my front door, placing me and everyone in my employ in danger, she fingers the rim of the glass. So wise, so very, very wise. The young shaman's eyes never leave the floor. We're, we're sorry, auntie. We, we thought... Her black eyes flash. You mustn't speak until you are spoken to, gobbit, dear. The smile turns mean. And since you are one short hair away from being dumped in the river, chained to Isobel's corpse... I suggest you let your new friends here do the talking for a while. Does that make sense to you, dear? Her tr treacle voice is back, sweet, nasal, and grinding. Is that a word? Treacle? I never heard it. I'm probably saying it all wrong, but hey, who knows? Who can say dark circles ring Gobbit's armpits? Yes, auntie. So she's sweating or urinating through her armpits. It's a little off-putting. Probably doesn't smell too good. Chang inclines her head gently. Very good. You learn so quickly. Gobbit, keep a cool head in a tense situation. Kept a cool head in a tense situation. She's the one who led us out of the police ambush. Gobbit's eyes dart from you to the triad boss and back again. A thin trickle of perspiration slides from beneath the ropes of her hair. Kindly Cheng slowly turns, directs her attention to you. Her voice remains cl <laughs> cloyingly sweet. Really. How very cloy of you. Mwah. Uh, I count Little Gobbit here among my most resourceful runners, but I admit, it's good to have outside validation from time to time. The look of gratitude from the young rat shaman is deeply sincere and exceedingly brief. Kindly ch Kindly's chin lowers and her nostrils flare. And now that you shared that valuable little tidbit, perhaps you would be so kind as to keep your effing mouth shut until you are spoken to. Her voice returns sweet once again. Can you do that for me? She'll remain silent. She smiles with her mouth. Her eyes remain cold. I do appreciate it, dear. She pours another drink. Her cheeks are rosy, already flushed. And now, my darlings, I understand from little rat crap here that you came from Seattle to meet my uh, client, Mr. Black. Wu's jaw tightens at the word client. But before you can find him, the HKPF started a splattering gray matter everywhere and everything went to crap. And now you need your sins burned so you can disappear before you end up dead, too. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Is that possible? Can you help us? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Why don't we start with you telling me who you are? Call me Squigs. 
Oh, you've already chosen a street name. How prescient of you. Cheng looks at you approvingly. Squigs, it's a good name. Has real character. She flutters her eyelashes at you. Now, what's your real name? I mean, you do want me to erase your identities, don't you, dear? I'll need to know who you are first. Bumpy, I guess that's what you'd call me as a street samurai. Bumpy, I do what needs doing. I'm a street samurai, sure. She rests her chin on her hand. Ah, yes, you're from Seattle. Street samurai isn't something we say here in Kong Kong. We prefer street soldier. And how did you become a street soldier, Bumpy? Uh, I was military, then I wasn't. A corp trained me. I was a wage slave for a while, learned to trade. Private security, I spent a little time with a knight's errant. Sure. Picked it up young. I've been in the cooler for a few. Let's just say I'm self-taught and leave it at that. Wu lets out a grunt. Better leave it at that. Kindly Cheng whips her head towards Wu. A nasty retort already on her lips, but then she stops. Sticks out her lower lip as she sizes him up. She turns her to her lieutenant standing behind her, nodding her approval. Looks like the gun show is in town. What's your name, gun show? Wu's focus remains straight ahead. Duncan Wu. I'm a cop. Lone Star. Uh, I hear there were some fresh corpses found on the docks tonight. Smugglers, I believe. Didn't sound like Hong Kong police when I heard about it. You're doing Duncan Wu? Wu's eyes remain fixed on the spot on the wall behind her. He smolders. I identify myself as Lone Star, but they wouldn't stand down. They had weapons. It was self-defense. She puckers her lips at him. Her voice sings on. I don't care, sweetie. They weren't my people. But now I know you're a life-taker, Mr. Gunshow. You and your friend here. She begins arranging mahjong tiles on the table in front of her. But now I'm curious. Why were you meeting Raymond Black on the docks tonight? Raymond Black is our foster fa father. He's a friend. Said he needed our help. Just out for a stroll. It was a beautiful night. Foster father. We're going to be semi-honest when it, when it, you know, it behooves us. But, eh, we, we're not above lying. I'm just saying. That makes her pause. Chang lifts her bottle of swill and eyes the label, connecting the dots in her own head. Interesting. A look of disgust passes over her face. Sorry, kids, but he was looking like crap when I saw him. Eyes half open, dark circles around them, dragging his feet the whole bit. She tisks in displeasure. Your foster daddy was in a bad place. You think it was drugs? Tell us everything you know about him. Sounds like he wasn't sleeping. Could be. From what he said, it sounded like he was having nightmares. He would stop in the middle of a sentence and mutter something to himself. One time it was about the walls breathing or something. Another time it was about teeth. Thousands of teeth. I remember him drifting off near the end of our meeting. It was like he was off somewhere else in his head. He said, I, I left prosperity in there. Then Nightjar put his hand on Mr. Black's shoulder asked him why he wanted to go into the walled city so badly. That seemed to bring him back. When your old man opened his eyes, they were full of tears. Then he muttered something else I couldn't make out. She pours herself another shot, tosses it back, and rubs her belly. Your daddy got real irritating after a while. What do you think it means? I can imagine. How do you leave prosperity? Do you think prosperity could be a person? I have no effing clue. She grabs a long, a slim cigar okay, from a pack on the mahjong table lights it. All right, let's get to it. She exhales smoke, pointing two fingers at you and Wu. You two need your sins burned, and you need them burned fast. Hong Kong dragnets are bad news. When they roll, they roll in force. Armored personnel carriers, heavy armor, heavy weapons, sorcerers, the whole thing. And they aren't coming to arrest you. She folds her arm, arms across her chest. The thin cigar bobs in her mouth as she speaks. The good news is, I can help you. With a wave of my hand, I can have your sins disappear. But you need to understand, my darlings, is that what you're asking for is not a simple request. Burning a sin isn't just deleting a number, it's wiping all reference to that number from all the world's largest databases. It's masking your mugshot in their facial recognition database so that the first camera you walk past doesn't bring them down on you like a ton of bricks. It's covering our effing tracks so that the act of burning your sin doesn't lead them right to us. It requires contacts in numerous corporations and the UCAS government. Smoke rolls out of the triad boss's nose. It requires someone like me. Fair enough. And therefore, I need to make a choice. She takes another drag on her cigar and gently places her palm flat on the table. Do I kill you and dispose of your bodies before the cops come looking for you, or do I help you burn your sins? Well, I know my vote. How would killing us benefit you? We're more valuable alive. Help us and we'll help you. Cheng rests her chin on her hand again and smiles at you. Killing you would be far simpler, my darlings. Less moving parts, if you're alive, 
She stares at you for a moment, chin still on hand, thinking, taps her ash on the floor without taking her eyes off of you. A low, reluctant growl rumbles somewhere deep in her throat. Okay, you live for now. I'll put your sins to the torch. However, I'll need to call in several valuable favors within my network to do so. And those favors do not come cheap. Kindly Cheng stubs out her cigar. You will owe me. What do you want us to do? Whatever you say, auntie. Can't say I'm surprised. What do you want us to do? I want you to deliver a message for me to a business associate in the walled city. The Yellow Lotus has a strong presence inside, Bumpy. Isobel can tell you about it, can't you, dear? Isobel grew up in the walled city. Isobel's eyes remain low lowered. They collect taxes from corporations, extort protection money from shopkeepers, run drugs, guns, people. They hurt people. We do those things, yes, but to be fair, we also operate the walled city's black market. You might not be alive today if it weren't for that lifeline that we provide. Isobel clams up tight. Cheng picks up a mahjong tile and turns it with her fingers. There is a red pole, a sort of enforcer, yes, on the inside. His name is Strangler Bao. Bao is a strong man, a good soldier, but he has forgotten his place. I need you to remind him. And how are we supposed to do that? Want us to make an example of him? Let me guess. By remind him, you mean put a bullet in his head. Want us to make an example of him. Did I say that I wanted you to make an example of him? No. I want you to deliver a message. She tosses you a memory stick. Bring this to him in my name, and remember that Bayo's men are my men by right. They should all be serving me. Killing them would be a waste of resources. I have no use for dead soldiers. She turns to Gobbit and Isobel. One of you will go with these two westerners to the walled city. Help them locate Bayo and show them the ropes. The other will remain here with me. I have several menial degrading tasks that need doing around the establishment. No matter who goes and who stays, you'll both pay for bringing an APB to my doorstep. There's that throat catch, guys, I keep telling you about. It, it just happens like once a recording. It's like da 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 uh, uh, and tries to choke me out. It's fine. I think somebody has psychic powers and they're like reaching through the... Uh, it's fine. Yes, auntie, says Gabbat. Yes, auntie, says Isobel. Now, I'm going to find out who ordered the hit on Nightjar and do some dentistry to him with power tools. Ouch. She closes her eyes and smiles with pleasure. That boy was my favorite. He sang to me sometimes. She opens her eyes again and sneers. That other one? I don't care about. Gut shot was an a-hole. She turns away and waves you off with the back of her hand. That will be all, my darlings. Return to me when you are done. One last question, auntie. Thanks for the favor, auntie. Deal. Let's say deal. Who turns to leave? Well, we're still alive. That's something. Alright, we survived. We gained three more karma and... Enter the walled city and deliver the message to Strangler Bayo. Alright, I guess that's going to be the plan, so let's head on out and get to stepping and get to doing that. Well, she did seem like a rather terrifying and, well, not super friendly lady, but I think in the end it was actually still all okay. Alright, we're going to roll out over here, we're going to take a look at what we're walking past, or running past in this particular case. I'm wondering if I was supposed to talk to someone. Let's inspect this and says, clearly, uh, don't mess with the law. Okay. The installation of these heavy wires is cracked. They buzz and crackle occasionally as stray something did something to someone. Well, I didn't get to read all of that, unfortunately. I'm sorry, guys. I was too busy reading the cool little graffiti there. Don't mess with the law. I am the law. I was waiting for, like, a little Stallone thing going on there, you know. A little bit of, uh, oh, I don't remember what that was called now. It was one of the, oh, ju Judge... Dread, was it? Judd Jud Dread or something along those lines. One of the worst movies ever made. I heard the remake was better, but still terrible. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. I can't recall. I think I saw it, and it wasn't good, but it was a lot better than the original. Alright, let's go talk to the Triad Guard. I don't think I ever saw the full original. I saw parts of it, and it was really bad. The thug taps his earpiece, gestures with his head. Auntie Chang said you'd be coming. You can pass. Uh-huh. Well, I feel as though we're missing out on someone. We're going to go over here and enter the walled city. I, do we get to choose who comes with... Oh, here we go. Choosing your team. When traveling to new mission locations, you'll be able to choose which members of your team to bring and modify their loadout for the run. When members of your team become permanently incapacitated on a mission, they'll be automatically extracted for emergency medical care. They will be patched up and ready for action the next time you return to Hiwai. Avoid this loss of firepower, okay, by always carrying some dock wagon trauma kits into the field. 
Okay, well, we get to choose a couple of folks to go with us. We have Gobbit and Isobel. Those are our two. Now, Isobel is a Decker, as dangerous in Meat Space as she is in the Matrix. Carries explosives and a silver gun pistol. Interesting. Not too shabby. Or we have Gobbit the Orc Shaman. Eh. A devotee of Rat. Specializes in spirit control barriers and area of effect spell damages. Alright, well... Hmm. Well, this is a tough one for me, because I don't know which one I'd rather have. I guess I'm going to bring Gobbit. She's far sexier than the dwarf, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if we're going solely off looks, I would totally get down with the fangs. I'm just saying. It's, you know, that's definitely my style. Alright. We're going to roll out in here and see what's up. And it looks like we'll be able to get a little bit in here before we have to break off of the episode. But I don't think it'll be too, too bad. Shouldn't be anyway. Shouldn't be too bad. Oh, yeah, we can read this. Forgot about that. Awkward! Kowloon City, or Walled City, the most densely populated spot on Earth. Nearly 40,000 people crammed into seven acres of chaos, poverty, disease, and vice. A self-contained city that collects no taxes and provides no city services. Stagnant water sits in temporary wells. Trash lies piled on roofs for controlled burns. Okay, that seems a bit weird. Improvised structures lean dangerously over populated areas. That does seem like a pretty nasty place to visit, and even a worse place to live. It's the ideal breeding ground for all manner of illicit dr or trade, drugs, gambling, black market trade, metahuman trafficking, and anything and everything in between. The only law is Triad Law, and now you need to enter this septic system of a city, find a Triad Enforcer named Strangler Bao, and deliver a message from Kindly Chang. Oh, that doesn't sound bad at all. Okay, well, we don't have any uh, extra equipment, so I guess we just roll out with this. I probably should have bought some stuff, honestly, but it's okay. Eh, let's just go with it. We'll roll out with our pretty generic equipment that we had. If I run into any issues, I suppose I can always go back and grab some new stuff. I mean, I don't know if we can leave the mission. Probably struggle through, but we'll see. You still have some karma available to improve your character's attribute skills? Yeah, I actually do want to do that. Open the karma screen. Confirm! There it is. Alright. We have nine available. Our body is relatively high up there. We're going to go one more. And the body. Actually, that might be too much. We have nine. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, we're going to go into strength now. And we have a little bit more into weapons here. We have three to spend. Unfortunately, we don't have a thing to actually spend. Well, we can go here. We can get um, a little bit more into dodge. And then, I don't know. Is there anything else we even wanted at this point? I don't think so. Dragon line's visible. Not yet. Okay, that's fine. Alright, I think we're okay with this. We'll confirm it. Foul, oily water rains down from above, mixes with the filth and offal and swill of the streets. Turns it into a flowing slurry of unrecognizable sewage. Yummy. In the distance, the sounds of back alley activity add to the ambiance at your arrival. Breaking glass, the cracking hiss of a garbage fire, faint screams of terror punctuated by the occasional gunshot, sex and business and violence and misery blended into one. Who winces at the stink, waves a hand in front of his face. Raymond said that prosperity is in the walled city, but I don't see it. Why the hell would he want to set one foot in this place? You got me. As I said, the walled city is the worst slum in the eastern hemisphere, maybe in the world. A rat pokes its head out from the fold in her clothing, squeals softly. She reaches up a hand to comfort it. There's something wrong with this place. It isn't just a slum. It feels poisonous somehow, on an astral level. It churns my stomach to even come near it. Who nods in agreement? Okay, you were right. This isn't the Barons. It feels, uh, I don't know, thicker. He goggles the place. Okay, goggles it, huh? Which way? He goggles the place. The Lotus Den. That's what Bayo calls his little corner of hell. I don't know where it is offhand, but I have a way of finding things. There's a flurry of motion at her hip, and a second pair of beady eyes appears. Gobbit shifts her hand from one rat to the other, stroking each in turn. They probably aren't expecting anyone to come in for us. We can kick in the door, drop the guards, hand over the message, and get the hell out. Kindly doesn't want them dead. She wants them to remember where their loyalties lie. It's tough to remember much of anything when you've got a bullet in your head. I mean, we could kill them if we really wanted to. Technically, Bayo is the only one that has to live, but 
I'd rather keep Auntie Chang happy than piss her off again. Well, that'll be up to them. This group's safety is my biggest concern. We don't need to risk our necks for a bunch of triad thugs. We may need kindly Chang, but she doesn't owe us. We make our own own us. We make our own decisions. Alright, well, that'll be up to them. I think that's the easiest one. They don't try and kill us, then we don't dust them. Got it. I like it. Let's get this done. Alright, well, let's get this done indeed. Duncan and Gobbit must survive. Do not kill any yellow lotus if we can manage it. <laughs> no, uh, no promises on that one. Alright, well, we have to go look around, I suppose. This place does not look like a very pleasant place to visit. Hmm. Alright, well, we'll come over here, I guess. I'll zoom in, kind of take in the uh, locals a little bit better. Does that dude not have a leg? He's missing something? Or maybe he's sitting cross-legged. I don't know. He doesn't look super friendly, though. Like, that much is certain. Alright, let's inspect this real quick. A putrid stench emanates from the remains of this building. You see nothing that would cause it. Dead body. Alright, ooh, there's a merchant. Hello. Hello, merchant. A bedraggled old woman looks up from her sewing at the sound of your approach. Clothing, clothing, I have good quality clothing for sale. What's the news here? Anything interesting? Ever heard anyone say prosperity is in the walled city? She cocks her head like a dog listening to a noise that it can't understand. Prosperity? She sounds it out to herself. I don't even know what that means. What's the news here? Anything interesting? Interesting? Here? No, nothing changes here. Nothing changes. She settles her weight with an audible harumph. Strangler Bob is a big man now. He is very important, very impatient. You know, Bayo. Yeah, we're real close friends. You tell your friend that he still owes me for that suit. I don't sew for nothing. You can't eat air. We'll get right on that. She nods sagely. You see that you do. Now, what else do you want? Ah, later, lady. We're out. Okay. Well, apparently, we've learned something new, that we can't eat air. That is uh, pretty impressive, if you ask me. Do we actually get a map of this? No. I thought maybe there'd be like an overview map or something. Over here! H help! Hello. A young woman lies on the ground. She's a bloody mess. Streaks and splatters of crimson crisscross her blouse and mat, of, uh, and mat her hair. Judging by the quality of her clothing and the bag on her shoulder, you'd make her out as a student. She's as out of place here as a librarian would be in a game of Urban Brawl. She struggles to move, but she's clearly exhausted. The dark circles under her eyes tell you that she hasn't slept in days. She does look a little bit messed up. When the woman sees you heading her way, her face hardens. You see her hand slip into her jacket pocket, but as she studies your faces, the fear in her eyes give way to curiosity. You guys don't look like you're from around here. A hacking cough shakes her, but her eyes remain fixed on you. That's right, we're out of towners. What happened to you? You either. Who are you? I'm a student at HKU. She glances around watchfully over your shoulder at the buildings looming above her into the windows nearby. Doing some research. Gotta finish before I can leave. This place is dangerous. What are you doing here alone? You look like you haven't slept in days. What kind of research? I haven't slept in days. That's because I haven't. I'd been living with a family in one of the inner blocks for the past few months, working on my thesis. It was bad, but I could handle it. The past five days, though, I've been living on the streets, hiding from the predators. What happened to the family? Funny place to write a thesis. A pained expression washes over her face. I'm not 100% sure. The mother, she worked at a dive bar as a hostess. The father was a handyman. They never really went anywhere. Didn't have the money to. I woke up one day and the whole family was gone. They were just gone. I squatted in their place a while, but then some people started coming around. I am the place. I figured I should get out, finish my research as fast as I could, and head back to campus. Then I got sick. Who grunts. What kind of research would you do in a place like this? My thesis is about Feng, Feng Shui in the sixth world. Uh, this was the right place to do it. The only place to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. The sixth world. Uh, academic etiquette we don't have. Still in the data gathering phase, or are you attempting to verify a, a hypothesis? What's Feng Shui? What, what does Feng Shui have to do with a slum? Let's do that one. Everything, I, I think. Absolutely everything. Rich people hire geomancers to design the interiors of their homes. 
to attune them to just the tune them just right to achieve balance and harmony. The poor have nothing like that. Leave a slum to fester long enough and you get, well, this. She glances at her surroundings, a look of profound disgust on her face. I think that the negative feng shui of places like this affects the people who live here. That it changes them in a fundamental way and makes them less capable of breaking the cycle and getting out. That's what I'm trying to prove. Before the awakening, people thought of feng shui as a philosophical term or system. Now the sixth world it's more than that, it's actually a form of magic. The whole thing revolves around Qi, the invisible life energy that binds every person and thing together. It's very real here in Hong Kong, nobody knows the reason why. Maybe it's the only real, maybe it's only real because people believe that it is. The important thing is that it's a measurable, quantifiable phenomenon. There's an entire industry that's grown up around it. So how's this Qi, how's the Qi in this place? This doesn't look like the place where people are harmonized with anything. No, it isn't. Not at all. The feng shui in the walled city is completely screwed. I mean, just look at the place. She gestures at the squalor surrounding you. The key is all wrong here. You can feel it, right? I feel that something was wrong the minute I walked in. Bad key, huh? Yeah, bad feng shui. Key needs to flow or it goes sour. Positive feng shui allows that to happen. The woman clears her throat then lets out a hacking cough. The effort requires a moment for her to recover before she speaks again. You know, I hate to admit it, but uh, I could use some help. I started running and, well, I guess you'd call it an experiment of sorts. Nothing conclusive, just a few quick trials to support my hypothesis before I go into hardcore data gathering mode. There are only a few things left to do. If you could finish them for me, I could get out of here. She holds a crumpled piece of paper. Please, follow the notes on this sheet. Duncan takes the paper from her outstretched hand and examines it, frowning. Just say what you need us to do. I need you to make adjustments to the area's feng shui. My notes will tell you how. The goal is to remove sources of friction and to record the results. My hypothesis is that even the small adjustments can have a measurable impact on the key flow. If I'm right, it should improve and life here should get just a little bit better. Well, I'll see what I can do. Alright folks, and with that I am going to break off the episode right here. We will feng shui our way around and do what we can in the very next episode, hopefully not killing any of the Yellow Lotus Triad People of Death, and getting the mission done as, well, efficiently as possible for good old kindly Cheng, because, well, as much as we're going to owe her, I'd rather not make her mad and still have to owe her, so that's going to be the play. Either way guys, until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums.